ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू Many would recall having been gifted with visions related to Sai Baba of Shirdi to the devotees Chinna Baba ya and Krishna Maharaj Baba had shown to Chinna Baba ya the samadhi of Shirdi Sai Baba and to Krishna Maharaj the jiva samadhi of the disciple of Baba projected on a piece of white cloth he showed us a dark place where a man was sitting inside a covered brick structure krishna marazu would recall isramma would remember baba telling her listen shirdi sai ram is here she and everyone in the room would hear footsteps which would cease when the footsteps reach the chair where baba sat Baba composed a number of songs and verses on Sai Baba of Shirdi to be used for bhajan singing. The songs contained references to Dwarka Mai, Patha Mandiram, Udi, Margoza tree and other details of the milieu of Shirdi Sai Baba. And thus was strange to the devotees who assembled at Puttaparthi but very familiar to Shirdi devotees from Maharashtra. In his playfulness, Baba once even showed stars in the sky at two o'clock one bright afternoon to Subama and others in front of her house. Some even commented, "They are always there, but we don't see them. What big thing is he showing?" On another occasion, Baba asked Subarazu and others visiting Puttaparthi. from kamalapuram to lay their heads on his chest and when they did so they heard the enchanting melody of a flute baba told them that it is the melody of the celestial flute of lord krishna a sound believed to have once brought even the yamuna river to a standstill baba would still occasionally complain of a householder atmosphere in the places where he stayed and suddenly put disappear subham and others would organize a search in every hill in the vicinity they would find him sitting quietly on some rock overlooking the valley or in some cave like hollow or crevice or on the sands of the river or on the other bank of the river the people attending him were perplexed by these events Some of them were afraid that he would go away to the Himalayas and that he would waste himself in ascetism. People began to have the impression that he was strengthening himself through yogic practices much to the amusement of Baba. One day when a party of devotees was accompanying Baba in a caravan of a bullock carts he got down from his cart and went into the hills and disappeared. The entire area was searched, but there was no trace of him. Everyone was in great distress, and Baba appeared after dusk, fresh and smiling, laying all anxiety to rest. There is another incident concerning bullock carts that N. Kasturi writes about. Baba's sister Venkamma, who had been there as a witness. and fellow traveler would give a more detailed account of it we were returning in bullock carts from agrahar where swami had been invited by the time we reached in the forest it was dark then swami got down from the cart on some pretext after some time two children came to our cart and said that swami had asked them to convey to me to allow a lady belonging to the ready community who was coming from agrahar to travel in the cart then i told them who was i to reject anybody sent by swami i cleaned the inside of the cart and neatly spread a blanket for her i soon noticed a lady coming from a distance she appeared to be hiding her face she seemed to look very beautiful i asked the car driver to stop After she came to the cart, I extended my hand to help her to climb into the cart, 
everything I have, Amma. The children laughed aloud and said, it was not Amma, but Swami. Swami asked me whether he really believed him to be a lady. Venkama remained Baba's foremost devotee. She would recall an intimate experience that she had during this time. I came to Puttaparthi with a book and with a picture of a collage of deities. I used to offer puja before the picture every day and read the small book. Seeing the picture once, Swami asked whether I needed a bigger one. He then went to Uravakonda to study. On the night before his arrival to Puttaparthi as Sai Baba, I heard a voice calling Amai, Amai late at night. Thinking that Satya had come, I went to the door, but I only found a paper roll lying outside. I unrolled it and found that the picture depicting the impression of Rama, Krishna, Shiva and Maruti inside. I kept the miraculously delivered picture in the shrine and began my day's routine. At nine in the morning, Swami came and asked me, Did you scold me? for not being asleep, or were you afraid that a snake or a scorpion had entered the house? I did not reply. He asked me to give him back the picture. He then took out the picture from its frame and fixed this new one on it, and giving it to me, asked me to perform puja. Subama and Kamalama had many relatives living in the distant places. They could not resist telling them that a wonder boy, Balasai, as many called him then, he had declared himself as being the incarnation of Sai Baba of Shirdi, inviting them to come and see him. Subama informed her relatives in so many towns in the vicinity, Bukkapatnam, Kuttagulla, Kottakota, Agraharam, Illuru, Kalluru and Anantapur about Baba opening the gates of Puttaparthi to the people of Bangalore, the big city 160 kilometers away, belonged to the erstwhile Mysore state. Kamalama had written to her brother, P. S. Krishnamurti, who was studying in Bangalore and was staying with us. She wrote, A Bhattrazu boy. Bhattrazu is the community to which Baba belongs. A Bhattrazu boy has become Sai Baba and is staying in our house. He materializes things and cures diseases. Come and see him. Kamalamma's brother P. S. Krishnamurti responded to his sister's letter, bringing with him to Puttaparthi his host in Bangalore, Shimaraj Peta, Narayan Sharma and his family. Narayan Sharma and his wife Savitramma were among the first, if not the very first, residents of Bangalore to visit Puttaparthi. This was probably toward the end of 1943. About the same time, Kamalamma's sister, Sarojamma, along with her husband, Shamanna and daughter, Jagadamba, also visited Puttaparthi. A family friend, Ramamurthy, accompanied them. Interesting enough, Krishnamurthy, who accompanied the families of both Narayan Sharma, his host in Bangalore, and Sarojama, his sister, to Puttaparthi, used to visit his sister Karnam Kavalamma at Puttaparthi earlier as a boy, but had not taken serious note of the young Baba then. After visit, Sharma's daughter Shanta, in the years to come, would recall my mother had many children who died soon after birth. She wanted to have a male child. So along with my cousin Sucharita, our guide Krishnamurti and I, she went to visit Puttaparthi for Baba's blessings. We went by train to Georgetown near railway station at Anantapur to my aunt Shankarlal Sitamma, who was Baba's devotee along with her and her adopted daughter, Harshalata, we went to Bukkapatnam and reached Puttaparthi at 11 a.m. We stayed 
at Kamrama's house for a month. Baba said that my father would come later with someone else to Puttaparthi. Father was an orthodox Brahmin. It was impossible that he would visit Puttaparthi. My father, however, did visit Puttaparthi along with Srinivasamurthy, a student who was staying in our house before we left for Bangalore. One day after his arrival, Baba took him to Chitravati River Bank with a few other devotees. Bhajans were held there. Afterwards, he asked everyone except my father to return to the house. He even sent back Srinivasamurthy. Leading my father to the following river, Baba asked him to watch his reflection in the water. My father first saw such Sai Baba himself, then only the halo of hair that surrounds his head, and then he had the rare vision of the Shavataras, the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu. One by one, the Kalki avatar on heart's back had the form of Baba himself. My father fell on Baba's feet in spiritual ecstasy and pleaded that the final release be granted. Baba materialized a Japamala and told him that he would not live much longer. Later, at Puttaparthi, Baba told my mother that she would not have sons. He said, Consider me as your son, and I will take care of your daughter. Baba materialized a talisman which we took to a local goldsmith and had coated in silver. When the family saw Shamana and Narayana Sarma left Puttaparthi, they extended an invitation to Baba to visit them in Bangalore city. Shamana's son Ramaswamy would narrate many years later how Baba healed his handicapped sister Jagadamba. My sister Jagadamba dislocated her hip joint and could not walk. Mrs. One of her eyes was small, very red in color, and would always discharge some secretion. She could not see with that eye. Baba regularly applied vibhuti or sand from Chitravata River on the injured limb and fastened a bandage of jasmine flowers taken from garlands put around his photographs to her eyes. A complete cure was effected within eight days. Baba foretold her that she would get married and live long. A few years later, Jagadamba, about to give birth, was hospitalized. One night, a nurse on duty had fallen asleep. Baba manifested himself in the maternity ward and woke up the nurse. The nurse was furious and raised an alarm when she saw a man in the maternity ward. Baba told the nurse that in half an hour her patient would deliver and she was fast asleep. Baba also woke up an allegedly holy man, Digambara Swami, from his sleep of delusion. The Swami had been an ascetic and had lost the use of both the legs. He went about without clothes. When little Shanta was at Bukapatnam on her way to Puttaparthi, Digambara Swami was a guest at a house near the bus terminus in Bukhapatnam that day. Both she and Professor N. Kasturi corroborate Digambar Swami's visit to Puttaparthi. Even Karnam Gopal Rao of Puttaparthi would remember the incident. Swami was taken from Pinagunda to Bukhapatnam by bus and then only by bullock cart to Puttaparthi. He would constantly hold up his left hand on which the nails had grown very long. He jumped out of the bullock car in front of my house. He could not walk properly, but would jump like a frog. He went about for food. He had taken a vow of silence and it ignited the curiosity of everyone. But Baba gave the ascetic a large towel and bade him wrap it around his loins. The young Baba then advised ascetic, If you have cut off all relationship with the society, as your nakedness indicates you have, then why do you not go to a cave in a forest distant from human society? Why are you afraid? On the other hand, if you are craving for disciples, for name and food available in cities and towns, why do you allow yourself to be mistaken for a man with no attachment? These words from the young Baba 
struck everyone with wonder and admiration. Baba offered to help Digambar Swami.